Happy, happy Aloha Friday, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mai Tai's at Sunset. I'm Tai. Aloha, I'm Mai. Happy Aloha Friday. Happy weekend. I set the intention that we're going to share a lot of laughs, have a lot of fun, and healing. Yeah, so today I actually wanted to start off with some fun facts about Hawaii that I thought were really amusing. And I'm going to share them with Mai and kind of get her live reaction to them. I'm going to read some facts and questions that I learned about Hawaii today, but I also kind of knew some of them, but I thought they would be funny to share on here. So the number one Googled question Uh for Hawaii uh, from from people in the United States about Hawaii. Okay, can you take a guess at like what it might be? Um, Do you need a passport? Hell yeah. Ding, ding, ding. (laughs) She got it right. Did I really? Do you need a passport to visit (laughs) Hawaii? So these are so these are questions literally from people who live in the United States. It's not, you know, people out of the country, Mm -hmm. other things like that, because, of course, you would need a passport if you were coming from Japan or Europe or whatnot. Mm -hmm. In actuality, people don't realize that Hawaii is part of the United States and it is the 50th state. Yes. So it's the very last one to join the gang. I just think people are like, oh, it's in the middle of the ocean. I've got to have my passport because it's a foreign country. I've been been asked that a couple of times. Is is Hawaii like foreign lands? I'm like, no, it's a state. Well, (laughs) it's this is and you want to be careful because this is a controversial subject um, in Hawaii because um, it's very famous that Hawaii Kingdom was overthrown by (laughs) the U.S. government. So there's a lot of animosity that still exists and is taught in um, Hawaii schools about what happened. And there's always two sides to every story. And, you know, we're way beyond going back in time to do anything about it. But we can all just be culturally respectful of the Hawaiian culture and... um, the people who believe that it should be its own entity. Its own its own um, kingdom, yeah. And that's, yeah. Um, you know, um, today something happened um, at the time of this recording. Um, Queen Elizabeth passed away. Mm-hmm. So she's a, you know, we, it's weird to think of, you know, a monarchy. But here in Hawaii, we have a palace. We had kings and queens. Um, so it'd just be really interesting if it still even existed as it, the monarchy kind of exists in Europe, I guess in England specifically. I I know there are other, a few other countries that have, um, they have monarchs still. Yes. Quite a few countries do have monarchs. And I, I think you are hitting the nail on the head as far as like, if Hawaii was a kingdom, would it still be a kingdom? I think it might right now be similar to how England is like they would still have like a cultural reason to exist for native Hawaiian but the way that it was taken over and the way that like when they imprisoned the uh the queen it was kind of the end there's a lot of stuff that happened and I'm not qualified to talk about it um well, it's just interesting to know because a, a lot of people and a lot of our listeners don't know that Hawaii was once a kingdom, an independent kingdom mm-hmm. from the United States. So I can see why it would be confusing when you say like, you know, you have the king and the, and the queen. Like if you go by the statue we talked about, I mm-hmm. mean, you're like, oh, this was a king, like King Kamehameha. Like what? King Kamehameha, you know, yeah. so, so it's very it's very difficult for some people who have never been or don't understand but I really think it's really funny that you um, managed to get the first question right. <laughs> so we're going to go on to the next one. Uh, so Hawaii has a unique blend of cultures and a unique blend of mostly Asian culture. And a lot of people are like, okay, well, what language? What language is spoken in Hawaii? Ha- what language is spoken in Hawaii? And the answer is English, everyone. Um Again, part of the United States, lots of people, uh, you know, migrated there, immigrated there, whatever. But there's other languages. And the interesting thing is when people worked out on the the sugarcane farms, pineapple farms, all the all the different farms that were out there before, you know, everything was gentrified and taken over by, you know, the Industrial Revolution, basically. It's like 
they would speak pidgin, which is a slang of slang version of English, you know? Well, yeah, and because of all of the different other, cultures to like they try to communicate, try to communicate. So you have the Filipinos and you have the Portuguese mm-hmm. and you have the Japanese, the Okinawans, the Chinese, the Koreans and so many um, with their own languages trying to communicate. And mm-hmm. um, the missionaries who came were teaching everybody English. Everybody uses a little bit of each other's languages too, foreign loan words. Like when you, they don't have a word for it in their language, but you'll hear a mix of it all the time. All of our streets are mostly in Hawaiian. Um, there are some areas that have English names. It kind of depends on who um, was there and who made the street, right. who and- named it. And I think it's I think it's fun to actually listen to Pigeon. So our last recording had Tori on there. You and think she has an accent? She, she has, does. She has. That's she has the Hawaii accent. accent. She does. Her accent is stronger than mine. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think I got a couple comments of like, "Is this like normal?" And I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> you have to keep up. Uh, so the next question is, and I actually laughed out loud on this one because it was like, does everyone in Hawaii wear grass skirts and coconut bras? And I was like, I sure as hell hope not. At the hula shows, the hula dancers would be wearing grass skirts. That would, um, yeah, it'd be very itchy and very loud when you walked. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. By, by wearing of grass skirts and leaves and things like that. Uh, it's really just for cultural performances. It's it's not an everyday <laughs> kind of wear for anyone. I mean, they didn't have cotton and all the things that, you know, the mainland had, right? So they're they're utilizing what they have. And, and the thing is, Hawaii is considered one of the most, like, casually dressed places on Earth. It's so hot. You can wear... It's hot, but at the same time, like, I was telling my mom the other day, if I wear a Hawaiian shirt, it technically is dressed up in Hawaii like yeah men are always wearing like aloha shirts and aloha shirts women are in flowy dresses and um you wear that for work you wear that for parties you wear that for special events and occasions but uh just every day oh yeah and you wear it with your slippers no not if you're at work you have to wear shoes but um or sandals or sandals um it depends some places want you to have closed toed shoes right so okay so i'm gonna change subjects and like Mm -hmm. shift over I'm going to talk about like some bizarre laws and customs that Hawaii has. For all you lovely people who like Mai Tais and all the things out there, Mm -hmm. no double fisting. You cannot legally have two drinks in your hand and be drinking both of them. Yeah. No, you cannot. Yeah. When you go to the bars and stuff, they're like, are you buying this for another person? Because you cannot buy two drinks for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So don't do it. Don't get caught. in trouble. Yeah. And don't have any real open containers like on the beach, especially glass. Like it's a big no, no. Yeah. No open Respect containers. We talked about this because when you were in New Orleans and I was I'm always surprised when I see just people randomly walking on the road walking outside of buildings with open container. Um, Look, keep Hawaii. Keep Hawaii classy, not <laughs> trashy. OK, it's not New Orleans. It's not your backyard. Just keep it the way it is. Yeah. Okay, here's the next one. A lot of people don't like spam. Okay. But Hawaii is the one of the largest consumers of spam. So when you go there, don't turn your nose up to spam because Hawaiian people really know how to cook it. So there you go. <laughs> it is because of the all of the military that were here. And when we had the wartime, right? It's not just Hawaii. It was a lot of countries that fully adopted spam because that was the only meat product that they could get canned meats and it was just the most popular one okay so Any you're more? getting close to this list yeah okay. i got a few more there are no cat or dog people allowed in hawaii as far as you know how somebody says you're a cat lady uh-huh or animal hoarder you can't do that in hawaii so it's against the law to have more than 15 dogs and cats at any time i didn't know that i was like wait you can't have but i know 15 people. I know people who have (laughs) It's apparently very, very legal. Oh. It might be like a per how much square footage you have. Maybe. But it literally says like just because of health reasons, you shouldn't have more than For health reasons. I know that there have been a lot of raids and animals taken away from people who have Mm -hmm. had too many on their property. All right. Here's a fun one. Mm -hmm. So Hawaii used to have a law that says you could not leave your house without knowing where you're going. It was called the no wandering law. 
So you couldn't leave your house and just walk without a destination. That's interesting. I didn't know that one either. But that's not a law anymore, but I thought it was really funny. Hmm. Um, did you know it's illegal to feed the sharks? Oh. <laughs> no, but that happens all the time. In fact, there was, sadly, a woman from France visiting who was swimming. Oh, didn't that happen recently? That did happen recently. Um, I still haven't heard if she's out of critical condition. Um, I really hope she makes it. But she's from France. France has the entire Côte d'Azur, right? The All that water. She should know better. She was 100 feet offshore, and it was heavy rains previously the night before, so the water was murky. Oh, it was poo-poo water. We all know, all humans on the planet should know that you never go into murky water. Never. Because the predators, like sharks, they can't tell what you are in murky water. So it chomped onto her because it could sense that it was a thing. Mm. And, you know, sharks, they they touch things with their teeth. I I don't know what else to tell you. They just. But I I was really surprised that she didn't know that because especially if you're from France, they have an ocean. Yeah. They have a really pretty ocean, too. All right, I got two more for you. Ready? Okay. Billboards are 100% illegal. Yes, I knew that. I think it's because of the skyline. And the next one is, and this is the closer, identical twins are not allowed to work in the same company. It is illegal. (laughs) I've never heard that one. That's hilarious. That one's a good one because I'm like, wait, what do you mean they can't work together? But I guess there's some cultural thing like. Something must have happened for that to be a law. Everything happens for something there's weird to be always. Law. There's always a warning that comes there's out. Always, <laughs> there's always one that ruins it. Okay, so I just got back last night, actually this morning, from a trip to Seattle again, where I had my promotion mm-hmm. ceremony. It went really well. Uh, I have actually, in all my time in the military, I've never had an official promotion ceremony. So that was like a very special moment. And my unit made it very special uh, by... Giving me lots of presents and a lot of meaningful presents, which was really cool. And I really appreciated it. It was a beautiful service. Yeah, it was good. I did get one of the biggest challenge coins I've ever seen in my life. Oh, I didn't. Did I see the challenge coin? I sent it to you. Let me send it now because your eyes are doing something that tells me that you don't either A, didn't get it or B, didn't see it. I don't remember. Okay. Well, then I'll send it to you so that you can see. I thought they were two medals. No, that's a, those are, that's the front and back of a challenge coin. But one side looks like a life preserver and the other side has like the big hospital unit and all that stuff. So. See, okay. I thought that was the medal itself. And I was like, oh, they don't do like lines and things i, I don't know she doesn't know she doesn't know anything everybody she just let her let her, do, let her go military thing let it go um, sorry i'm sorry <laughs> but i did get that from the colonel which i thought was really cool speaking of cool things i finished it my tori oh arc. my god yay oh that is cool i didn't think it was that big but i love it wow you like did you did realism oh well it's her th- design is like that oh because you had to use her paint. oh but then yeah okay i went a little bit more than than child finger painting right just a little bit that was really <laughs> funny that I you help that was really funny you were like oh I, i'm actually an artist and she's like what the like, what the heck you Mai? showed me finger you made me show you finger painting <laughs> yeah i know no i absolutely had a, so much fun i felt like a kid with you know doing i had so much paint all over my oh, hands nice. the coolest part about this is she uses chalkboard paint oh so I can actually, I got to go find my chalks because I'm going to write a little message for the end of the video because that's kind of a cool feature that I don't even think she like advertises that, but it is a thing. It is chalkboard paint that she likes that because I asked her, why it's are like you the using texture. that as your medium? She likes it because it dries really fast, oh. Oh. but it's a bonus. I mean, it's more expensive. It's like one of the more expensive paints to um, purchase. It's got minerals in mm-hmm. it and it's heavy. So she pays a lot to ship that to Hawaii. But yeah, so I'm I have I'm I have ideas on like I'm gonna write some messages and stuff for the end of the video, but I don't know what's right. Cool. But I think it came out really cute. So I recorded the video, so it won't be on our channel. I have an art channel that I'll put it on. Oh, okay. And then we'll I'll just link I'll it. Cross advertise with yeah. hers. Yeah, I'll have the links for sure on this my ties episode, and it'll also be on our website. So. Yeah. You can find all the links on our website for everything. We should do a class together and live stream. Oh, yeah. Here in Hawaii when you come. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. We should totally like record while we're doing it and make fun of each other's finger painting. Sounds great. Love it. (laughs) 
Noted. <laughs> so what shows have you been watching recently? Okay, well, we were talking about seeing the movie Top Gun, which I just saw. Mm-hmm. Very nostalgic um, with the other, with the first movie. Um, Lots of nods to the original, yeah. Yeah, it was just a fun, fun movie. I watched the one Lost City. With Sandra Bullock, yep. That was funny. I I laughed a lot. Also, just another fun adventure. And then that other movie, Uncharted. (laughs) They were funny. I I liked it. I thought it was kind of a fun movie. You know, sometimes you just want a movie that's just going to like, you just entertain you, but entertain you. you. It's like, I need to turn off my brain for a little bit and I just want to go have fun mm-hmm. and I want to laugh. I want to see things that are crazy. And um, all three of those movies were really fun, good time to decompress and, you know, turn off the world and just lose yourself and laugh. Yeah. I thought Top Gun was pretty good. You know what I loved about that movie um, was that Val Kilmer made an appearance in it. Oh, Val Kilmer. And there's yeah. this Ice whole, Man. the whole scene between um, Val and Tom. And it's really, there's not a lot of, like, Val doesn't even talk. He types. And Tom Cruise and he's tearing up. And I'm tearing up. And it's just the two of them looking at each other. And was like, oh my God, these are like really good actors when... They're just acting with their face. You know, there's no words, no dialogue. It's really just their eyes and their face. And I was like, whew, that was that was like a powerful moment. Plus, I love Val Kilmer. So I was really happy to just see see him in that movie. Yeah, seeing him, I thought they said he has permanently lost his voice. So like because of he had throat cancer, didn't he? But they made it work. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, too, for what it was worth. I was like, okay. We're doing movie and TV reviews. So funny. Um, Okay, so TV. What are you watching on TV? Game of Thrones, Ring of Power. I'm watching the South Korean drama, Attorney, The Extraordinary Attorney Woo. I'm watching the anime version of X-Men. Um, what else have I watched? Junior Bake Off, British Bake Off. Like, <laughs> just random, random shows. American Horror Story, uh, the shorts. I don't watch that um, one. It's a little scary for me. You know what I just watched, though, and um, I asked you about Indian matchmaking. I love that show so much. I don't even know why. I'm so invested. Like, I'm. It's love. I saw that there was it's season two. It's a about and I was love. Like, why, why do I love this so much? I know. It's just real Anti-Sema, people. Auntie Seema, if you're listening to this one day, <laughs> like, I just want you to come and have tea. I liked um, seeing it from their perspective and i thought how interesting the cultural aspect was so important um like where they were from and if their values lined up you know being american raised american you know i'm just like it's you never even hear the term matchmaker or Mm -hmm. whatever that is but um my own great grandmother she was a picture bride all the way to hawaii my grandmother um actually was matched and my grandfather my mom's dad before he passed away was actually had multiple wives but he it was arranged marriage in china and he he never went to stay with his other wives and they actually you know were just like were they fine with it made, yeah they were fine with it because he would take care of them right so they lived in a nice house as long as he paid the actually, money get, doesn't matter yeah it doesn't matter and i mean they were they just were older maids i like the idea of killing off dating like here's here's a machine that's just gonna match you with someone who's gonna be great for you what i think is interesting though that i thought was really different was when they started talking on that first date like everything is like the family comes together and the family's all meeting and they're part of the decision process and then when they go on that first date to be alone together to communicate that the ones who were smart enough to ask the tough questions right away like how compatible are we let's figure this out right now and they were asking like kids and things those are things Mm -hmm. you never ask when you're just dating somebody no i mean i think it's fair to be like but they're like marriage hunting that's not dating first or second date you'd be like are you interested in having kids like what's your thoughts because first or second date you really want kids only in a marriage no i really think now it's like if you're seriously looking for a committed long-term relationship, I think you should ask those things in the beginning. Because what if you get down the road and then that person's like, I don't want kids. And then you're like, oh, I want like five. You know, mm-hmm. and then what do you do? You love this person. You've committed the time. And then now you're finding out that they don't want 
any children except for furry ones. No. So then you're screwed. I've had I've had so many friends that have gone through that. But, you know, that's when they were younger. So question, you you don't encourage asking the kid question or marriage question, in I, fact. I think it depends on your age and I think it depends on um, the dating. Well, I'm not going to be 20 and asking if no, I, no. you want to have kids. No. But I'm thinking like mid 30s to late 30s like you should ask those questions i think yeah the conversation is different as you get older you're also asking about merging finances when you're in your 30s and 40s like would you like to go get together and buy a house together would you like because those are big commitments that you cannot just walk away from easily look right now a lot of single people can't afford a house unless they have a va loan so i just want to throw it out there everyone (laughs) Military people have VA loans. <laughs> they still get those low mortgage rates, okay? So in the bigger picture, mm-hmm. sometimes military people are not that bad. Also speaking benefits. of military, um, there's a lot of young guys who – or young women who when they sign up, they are assigned to the barracks. But to get out of the barracks, they just have to get married. Yeah. Once you get married, yeah. you don't have to stay in the barracks. And if you could just stay married to them for like – how long do you need to get all the benefits? Ten years? I think two years. No, two years. You only have to be married to a military person to get medical and dental for life? I think so. I think it's like two to four. It's not ten. I know it's not ten. But I think – I think now they've changed it to where you can't get any benefits if you divorce. Oh. The kids can't. The kids can't. Because oh. they wanted to stop they wanted to stop people from like getting married for just getting married reasons. to get I mean you get a cola. lot of soldiers get you get to live get in a married. nice house. You get more pay. I mean the military machine a lot is of, all about like, you know <laughs> creating families and it's amazing. If you can get sucked up in that, you're gonna be set for life. So well, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell our audience don't marry anybody who's an E three or E four <laughs> and below because you're not gonna get any money. I think a private now gets three hundred dollars a paycheck. So if you're looking to bankroll with them, you're not gonna get any of that mess. But and you do get you do get to shop at the commissary where groceries may be cheaper sometimes. It depends on where you are. Three hundred dollars a week or every two weeks, y'all. Three hundred. What are you going to do with three hundred dollars every two weeks? <laughs> Nothing. But then you get also, yourself an officer or a warrant officer. Oh yeah, if you don't. Can, if you get an officer, or a higher enlisted soldier. Look for more stripes. Yeah. Like that's all I can tell you. <laughs> stripes and and brass and silver. Like do it. You know, what's your rank? More stars the better. More stars the better. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny. So one of my friends, she married an officer, and um, she had to go to officer wife school or spousal school or something where she had to learn etiquette and she had to learn like what? about the military ranks and things like when that this? because they don't do that anymore because i'll tell you what these some of these dependas male and female they thems on bases do not have any etiquette are you kidding me i want to say it wasn't that long ago you know what I love the most is when I lived in Hawaii and I went to like the commissary in commissary or the exchange in uniform. Mm-hmm. I have never seen so many women grab onto their husbands. And I'm just like, one, wrong team. Mm-hmm. Two, I ain't looking at your husband. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but they would grab onto them. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, nobody wants your specialist husband. I promise. <laughs> promise you you can't afford me anyway like uh, <laughs> i don't know if you've experienced that but next time you go to the exchange or the px or anything like that like just look around and see how many women are just clinging yes i've never noticed that you know why when i go i have to go with my parents because my dad is the retired military person and i right. have to usually my mom she wants you say that I'm a butterfly in a store, like I flutter yeah, to different wanders. things. My mother is ten times worse. Plus, she's short, and my dad's taller. <laughs> but um, I have to spend like my entire time when I shop with them, being in between them. I have to make sure I know where my father is. I have to make sure I know where my mother is, and I have to make sure that they find each other. Also, I does your dad push the cart? Yes, he holds onto the cart. He's he's a good husband. She's trained him well. And she runs around the store grabbing anything. And she'll forget. And she'll go like 10 aisles back in another direction. And then she'll come back again. And I'm like, oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. And then I have like my own little tiny list. 
that um, I'm trying to find things. So it gets very confusing when I'm with them. What was that? It was big oh. enough that I could see it on your phone. Fly. That's a big ass fly. Oh, I got you. <gasps> you bitch. killed it? You Are you hitting it with your sports bra? Oh, I got it, my. I killed it. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm going to tell you what, though. I am an expert at killing these bitches because of living in Hawaii. So what you do is you take a towel or you take like a piece of clothing uh -huh. and as they're like, cause as they're flying or whenever they land, you just like whack because you have so much surface area to get them. Mm -hmm. But you got to make sure you squish them when you pick them up because if you don't, they st they're still alive. Sometimes they're just in shock and they're just like, oh, I got hit. <laughs> so yeah, I sure did kill it with my sports bra. You <laughs> think I'm washing it. Anyway, um, let's see. There <laughs> I had to reach for whatever was closest. I was like, all right, this is it. Um, you know what the most effective one is? Is my bathing suit. Like, because it has that like, kind of it's stretchy. Yeah. Right? So it like actually goes further. And mm. it like, wapa. Anyway, yeah, no, that was a big, huge fly. Um, so I'm glad I got it. Um, there was something I was going to say. About my mother and father shopping? About the commissary. Oh, my mom is so excited about going to Hawaii next year and just like hang out with your mom. Mm -hmm. you, we were going to talk about like a list of things that um, we should yeah. let our mothers do. <laughs> well, we'll have to do that one next time. But no, she's excited. She's like, I'm going to hang out with my mom. Mm -hmm. And then while you guys are like going off and doing stuff. And they cooked together. It was so cute. The last time she stayed here with us and you and... They were like swapping recipes and it was just fun. They are cute. And they go shopping together. I took them. Where did I take them? Uh, to the farmer's market. I, uh, no, you went to Windward Mall. Yeah. The farmer's market, right? And then you guys went to Genki Sushi after. And then they fought. Yeah. And then they fought over paying the bill. <laughs> Round two, I'm going in. I, like, I want to watch it happen. I was laughing. I, I'm going to be more than happy to let them pay for dinner or whatever. I'm going to be like, yep, go for it. Um, so I dyed my hair lighter. I see. And Tuesday, I'm going to this new place. It's called the Studio Pod to get professional headshots done. And it is literally just a pod. Yeah. You go in and they take 15 shots and it prompts you the actual like thing. It tells you like how to pose and uh -huh. like how to look and... And things, so I'm getting my hair done. So and it's not a I've real photographer. Like my... It's all automatic. No. It's like. It's all automatic. And they'll do revisions. And they get you back your pictures in an hour. Oh, neat. So this video for this episode is going to be, I drove to the airport at night. That's fun. To and from the airport. I don't know how long our, our conversation is going to actually be when I edit it down. But I'm going to try to get most of around the airport because we had to do two trips around the airport because they weren't there the first time. So we had to go around again. So you get to see oh, a cool. lot of the airport at, in Hawaii. That'll be nice because a lot of people don't know that it's mostly an outdoor airport. Yeah. You got anything <laughs> about the airport? Don't bring fruit Oh, yeah, don't pay for it. But it has the most confusing signs. Yes. And before you go to the ticket counter to, like, check in to leave, you have to put your bag through, like, and get the sticker on it. I think a lot of people miss that. Like, you have to put your bag through the scanner so it agriculturally clears you. Yes. So you have to have that sticker. And I always see people's, like, stickers on their bags. That means they've been to yeah. Hawaii. But, like, don't mm -hmm. forget that step because they will turn you away. And if you're in a rush and you miss that step, you are screwed. Because by the time you get to the front of the line, they're going to reject you. And you got to go back to the back of the line because you have to go run your bags through. So just don't forget that step. Yeah. Agricultural sticker. And always have a pen in your bag on For your way form. to Hawaii. There's a form you have to fill out. That, that you cannot get off the airplane until you fill out that form. Honestly, I always put your address there. <laughs> you Since I have it memorized, I'm like, I just put her address. It's fine. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another episode of My Ties at Sunset. Be sure to check us out at MyTiesAtSunset.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. And until we meet again, ahui ho!